Hello everybody and welcome to Thursday Theory, where we discuss theory. <laughs> Alright guys, now first thing I want you to know is I'm playing Cutter and I've already discussed Anders Theory. I will get back to Anders eventually, but I want to do Cutter and a Forge one first. And what I want to say is, ignore the fact that this is on docks. It doesn't matter what map I was to do this on, I just wanted you to have some visuals to kind of prove what it is I'm saying. Now that doesn't mean what I do here is exactly what you should do, so don't even bother commenting on, well oh, Smug you shouldn't do that. Just listen to the theory, okay? <clears throat> now, Anders Theory is, if you didn't watch the video, go check it out, Anders Theory, is the more upgrades she gets, the better off she is. Well, that's true. We know that to be true. So, Cutter Theory is very different, and Forge Theory is very different as well. Cutter Theory is this. Cutter doesn't have heavy supply pads like Forge does. Cutter doesn't have half upgrades like Anders does. And so you see, all three of them are very, very different from each other. And so, knowing the theory behind all three and knowing what to do and why and when is important. Well here is the theory to Cutter. Cutter starts off with a $700 advantage. He doesn't have heavy supply pads and he doesn't have half upgrades. So he has to somehow use his $700 advantage to somehow beat Anders with upgrades and somehow beat a forge with money. Now Forge spends $225 on a supply pad. He has to upgrade his bases, and even though he has, he will have more money, he doesn't have money early game that much. Anders can't really go tanks because she can't do it off a fire base station. She has to upgrade her base, and therefore falling behind and cannot keep up in tanks. Now, that being said, the theory behind Cutter is get early units and steamroll them. You must use the power of your money advantage. So for example on a map like Docks, if you were against a Forge for example, if he click expands you cannot give Forge time because if you give Forge time he will destroy you. Like so crazily he will defeat you. So you'd have to use an early tank push, a tank rush essentially, with overwhelming power so early that he can't match it. Same with an Anders. Now we're not really so much talking about docks, it's just one of those examples to prove the theory. So this build I'm doing right here, I haven't showed this build before, and it's not an amazing build, but this is like an old school build. I'm sure a lot of people know it, uh, but it used to be one of the top things to do, and the reason I'm going to show it is because it's something simple that I haven't showed anybody yet, and it does prove the theory of, of Cutter Theory. I did show a couple builds that are better than this, but <clears throat> if you'll notice what this build allows me to do is, I went a little bit later Vehicle Depot than what you normally see me do, but it allows me to double pump tanks. Now Forge can't do this until a later period of time and if he does double pump he's not going to get canister shell early. But Cutter having the $700 advantage can double pump tanks by this build and allow himself to get canister early enough so that when he pushes, which I will demonstrate here, I will have too much power for a Forge to match. <clears throat> and what you need to do guys, it's very important to remember this. Now you have the cutter theory where you have to get units and you have to win early. So that means if you show up at this guy's expansion, like on docks for example, okay, you don't want to just try and kill the base because you're not going to succeed, okay? Kill the tanks first. Kill their, kill their units first. As long as you keep killing their units, you will always have a unit advantage. And having a unit advantage allows you to destroy their base. Okay? Now, on docks, it's especially important because if you push a forge's base, for example, a forge, 
and you push early when I'm going to do it. You want to be at the base as soon as you hit canister, usually. And what you basically want to do is find their tanks. If there's no tanks, kill the vehicle depot. Any tanks that show up, you, you save your canisters, okay? You don't use them in the buildings. You don't use them on the base. You wait. You know he's going to have tanks. You know you're going to have to kill them. So you save your canisters because you always want to be the first one to canister. You will have more tanks always as long as you keep fighting the tanks and the vehicle depots. Once you get a significant unit advantage and you know you have a unit advantage, then you kill the base. And by killing the base, he can't defeat you. Units are the ultimate power. You keep your full population and your power, and they never are allowed to get that power. They cannot win. And so that is the theory behind Cutter, guys. I really hope that you guys really understand the theory behind Cutter. You have to, there, it makes no sense to face an Anders and go into it late game. You're going to be creamed. There's no sense in facing a forge at 10 minutes. See, I have four cancer shell tanks under six minutes. Okay, If you attack when you hit Canny, it'll work. But if you face an Anders late game, it's not going to work well for you or against a forge because you forfeited your advantage. Your only advantage is that base upgrade. An elephant's not useful to you. I mean, you know, obviously, guys, there's some scenarios an elephant, but it's not going to make the difference between an Anders and a Forge. And you can't say your Mac Blast is the differential because carpet bombs, you know, I, I guess you could say Mac's better than a carpet, but not by much. And also, a Cryo Bomb is better than a Mac Blast any day. So, Cutter doesn't have any advantage except to do this theory. So you have to use this theory. If you're going to play Cutter, you have to use this theory. Okay? That doesn't mean you necessarily always, always, always go with tanks. I'm just saying, utilize your $700 advantage right away. Whether it's Warthogs or whatever, or using some kind of crazy max strategy. But you've got to utilize that extra money early so that you can win early. If you want to think about it this way, Cutter, Cutter is old, so he doesn't have much time left in life. It's kind of cruel to think about. He's an old man, so he doesn't have much time left, so he's got to get things done quickly. Anders, you know, she, she's all about, you got to, well, anyways, guys, we're not getting into that, but you get the idea. Now, I don't have heavy supply pads, and why would I upgrade a bunch of heavy supply pads, forfeiting more of my money away, only to wait for a later game? You know what? Cutter doesn't have a late game, especially not on docks. Anyways, guys, I hope this has helped you, enlightened you, made you see Halo Wars in a different light. Uh, I'll be doing Forge next Thursday. Uh, and let me know what you guys think, you know? And let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. But this is kind of what we'll do on Thursdays, guys. Theory of different things. I'll be branching out to Forge and Arbiter and all kinds of leaders. Anyways, guys, have a great day. Please comment, rate, subscribe, leave a like, tell your friends. And uh, I, I really want you to comment what you guys thought on this video, okay? And uh, have a great day, guys. Goodbye. Smug Big Bird says, this is Theory. Thursday Theory. Episode 1. Units. All units. All units. All units. Spinning up Mac rounds. Mac blast aborted. Spinning up Mac rounds. Mac All units. away. All units. You are victorious. <laughs>